This is what I've been doing with my uh, peach and nectarine tree. You can see the leaf curl we had on this. It got infected really bad and I didn't spray it because I forgot to spray it. You know, we don't practice everything we preach or we forget to do everything. And admittedly, a lot of us out there are quite busy with other things going on. But if you had a tree that was infected or has been infected by leaf curl, what you can do now is basically go up there, out to it like I have now, and physically remove all the affected leaves. You can see all the new leaves are coming up, still getting infected. I haven't sprayed it. I've only had a few couple of, well, a couple of tea bags, not a lot to actually help it. With the tannins from the tea, apparently it does work in suppressing it. It's not the be all to cure leaf curl, but it does help. And the tree's holding pretty well somewhat, and I have got some fruit on it. Have a look at that. I mean, there is not a lot. We've lost a lot of fruit off it because of leaf curl. Now, if you are going to control it and you want to get on top of it this time of the year, just remove it like I am here. Don't leave it on the ground. Pick them all off the ground. It's pointless because the spores will, will, will hibernate, will, will live on the plant, live on the soil, will live on the bark of the tree. And the real, only real way you can control it next year is not to start in winter. And if anybody has written or said to you, or you've read about starting sprays in winter when it's completely dormant, it's too late already you actually have to start earlier. I'm telling you start in autumn. So as soon as your leaves start to fall off the tree, 10% or 20% leaf fall, that's when you do your first application. While the tree is slowly going into dormancy, not later. If you wait till later and you only do one or two sprays, you've missed the boat like I have. Proof in the pudding, look at the mess. That's what happens. Now it's okay, I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna fix it. It's not the end of the day. It's not the end of the tree. But in some cases, it can be for some trees. It can be so severe that the tree never does recover. So you need to help it along if it's severe and to the point where you can't recognize or the leaves are unrecognizable. And what I mean by unrecognizable? Well, let me find one. I think I've taken all the worst ones off. Well, they get to this stage. Have a look at that. It curls over to that point there. Even worse than that. This is just a quick one that I've pulled, up, pulled off the tree. You've got to remove them and don't leave them on the ground and spray it. And what do you spray it with? Well, it's our disease control pack. It's on our website, vasilisgarden.com. You'll find it there. If you haven't got uh, internet access or you don't want to buy it online, go to your local garden centre or check them out or see what they've got available. I know it's all click and collect it nowadays. It's a bluestone copper sulphate or copper hydroxide or copper oxychloride fungicide. It's what you need to spray on the tree. You can still spray it now, hopefully to suppress any more of it. For me, I'm just going to battle it on with my you know, physical removal of it and hopefully it doesn't get any worse. And you can, it, Look, it's a lot better than what it was. Uh, the new growth is nice and clean here. Have a look at that. Beautiful. See all this growth here? This time of the year now, it's starting to settle down. And it's okay. I've got two or three or four fruit, fruits on the tree. Lucky me. I'll enjoy those. If you remember, about three or four days ago, we did a little post on our CGWS spraying for codling moth. We didn't show you the finished uh, results. This is what happens, because when you first apply it, it's wet and you don't see it dry out. And this was a quick application. I think I had about a litre left, or just over a litre in the bottle. So I haven't even done half the tree. Uh, for the demonstration, I just basically used up what I had. I need to come back and do the other side of the tree, but that's what I mean by coating it. So the emails that come through and saying, how much do I apply on the tree? Can I apply it on my fruit? That, well, that's the purpose of it. You need to apply it on your fruit, otherwise it's not going to protect it. In the case of your citrus trees, you need to apply it on the stems. So you need to coat all the stem like this to protect it as a shield of armour. And that's how it works. It, it stops the insect from being able to penetrate through because the CGWS has coated the actual outside of the fruit, leaf and branch causing it to be unable to penetrate through. And you can do that with all types of plants fruit trees and vegetables as well. Uh, if, you fall, if it falls on leafy greens, you're gonna to have to wash them out properly. They're a little bit harder to clean. This is the residue on the ground. Have a look at that whitening. So if you're gonna be using it, rest assured it's gonna widen up pretty much everything around it or the drip line of the tree, but it's non-toxic not poisonous, it's a clay based powder, it's safe, it's got the added sea, uh, seaweed solution into it and that really does help feed the plant at the same time. Or if you like, hang a codling moth trap up and we've got them on the other tree. We're going to actually spray that tree as well because I did that last year and it was very successful. I didn't do this one this year, and I, last year sorry, and I want to do this one as well this year like that. So I want to really protect them all. Unfortunately the nectarine as you saw earlier got the leaf curl on it. If you've got leaf curl, get rid of it, take it all off and start spraying if you like.
hard to, it, it's better to do something than nothing at all. Spray it with our disease control pack or copper oxychloride uh, based fungicide. Now, other questions we had on our CGWS, I know I'm jumping back and forth, but as far as the CGWS and household pets, dogs and cats are concerned, yes, it is safe. It won't harm them if they lick a leaf or two or something like that. They'll have to eat the whole tree to feel sick about that. Um, so it is safe for pets and animals. It is long weekend, nearly forgot. We've got our long week special, so we are starting it from today. That is our buy one, get one free, and a whole range of Vasili's Choice products. Yeah, I know, I keep promoting it out there, folks, but it's there for you to take advantage of. Plus, the team has said to me, give it an extra 15% off the entire range on our website. So check out the entire range, look for some great specials, take advantage of in your garden, so you can protect your trees just like this, and your fruit, vegetables, and flowers as well. Now, there's something I needed to tell you about my tomato and I'm, I'll quickly mention it, but we won't go there. You know the tomatoes I planted the other day that's going to be on TV next week? Well, I, uh, I had to pop out today and I asked my better half to water, my darling wife. So go and give them a water. Now, I had two watering cans. It was a 50-50. I forgot to mention that one of them, and you'll see it on the show, we used slasher in it so we watered the ground with slasher and the other one i used for fertilizer she didn't check out inside what content was inside so she's gone and watered my tomato plants with what the slasher watering can now it had residual slasher in it yeah i'm scared folks but you know what it's not her fault it's my fault i should have told her to use the right watering can doesn't matter we're gonna go water we're gonna flush them out and if you've done the same thing that's right if you've done the same thing with your garden go and flush it out deep watering that's what I'm going to do. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com. Buy one, get one free. 15% off everything. Maresi, I'm going to have to buy some sleeve from someone now.